This week on Wheel of Science, we're talking the moon. I don't even have to say anything, Neil. You know where my mind is. Love me some moon, be it crescent, half, or full. Exactly! You're watching Wheel of Science. Welcome to Wheel of Science, the interactive show where we answer your questions about the universe. I'm your host, Chuck Nice, and I don't answer your questions. The one, the only, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson answers your hey. questions. What's up, Neil? Is that your attempt to sound like more than one person? <laughs> Tyson! With the voices in my head, it sounds like more than one person to me, that's for sure. And it looks like I recognize that background there. Uh, where in the world is Neil deGrasse Tyson? I'm in my place. I'm in the Cosmic Office. My office at the Hayden Planetarium right here in New York City. Oh, 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 the Cosmic Crib. That's right. It's the crib. All right, Neil, what time is it, my friend? It's spin the wheel time. You heard the man spin that wheel. This is Jeremy Locus, who wants to know this. If the moon's orbit was further or closer to us, what kind of effect would it have on our planet? Very nice. So, one of the things that matters most about the moon and its distance is how powerful it is on tides. The tides are very sensitive to the distance the moon is from Earth. And so if the moon were much closer, for example, when the moon first formed, it was 20 times closer than it is today. And that would have made it 20 times 400, tides that were eight thousand times stronger than they are today. Can you imagine that? Water just pulverizing coastlines back and forth. By the way, the moon is spiraling away from us at a few inches per year. And in response, Earth's rotation is slowing down. And eventually, we will be tidally locked with the moon, only ever showing the same face. And when that happens, tides will no longer slosh in and out from the ocean shores. Wow, who knew that? The moon and my wife have so much in common, both inching away from me a little bit at a time. <laughs> All right, Neil, you ready for another question? Bring it on. Hermann Rudd wants to know, what material, substance, or natural resource is worth extracting from our moon? Will humanity ever do that? So the moon, all evidence points to the moon having formed from a protoplanet sideswiping Earth, sideswiping and ripping up our outer layers and those outer layers reforming into the moon. We have a very good sense of this because the moon does not have much of an iron core. So it's not made of the same stuff everything else is. It's made of this selectively filtered material called Earth's crust. So if you go to the moon, it'll look a lot like Earth's crust. That's not very interesting. You don't have to go to the moon to get Earth's crust stuff. Plus, it's not going to have much metals either. There's not, not much iron. We get the iron from Earth. Here's what the moon has that we don't have. Helium-3. These are particles that stream from the sun. And they get embedded in the lunar soils, and they just stay there. It's called the regolith, the lunar regolith. And it just stays there. Helium-3 is an important ingredient in thermonuclear fusion. And if you're going to have thermonuclear fusion reactors to generate energy, you would want helium-3 to help that process out. Otherwise, it takes a lot of energy to get to that, to get to the final result in your thermonuclear fusion. So if you mine the moon for helium-3, you could become possibly the world's first trillionaire. First trillionaire, I am on it. To the moon, Alice, to the moon. Who knew he was threatening her with great wealth? And you know what? We're gonna take a break right now, and you millennials can go look up that dated ancient reference figure out why it'll never happen in today's society. We'll be right back with more Wheel of Science. Thanks to Wix for sponsoring this episode of Wheel of Science. Did you know that our fastest rockets take days to reach the moon? But using artificial design intelligence on Wix will allow you to build a website in a fraction of that time? Yeah, like this. Let's do it. With ADI, you just answer a few questions and your site is almost ready to go. Go to Wix.com slash go slash StarTalk and begin your site right now. Welcome back to Wheel of Science. It's time to jump right in and get another question. You ready, Neil? Spin that wheel. Raymond Bernadesius wants to know this. Why did we stop exploring the moon? 
Neil. Mm, that's because you think, and so do so many other people, that we went to the moon to explore the moon. We went to the moon to beat the Russians, back then the Soviet Union. We, they, were, they were beating us in everything. And we might remember ourselves in America as pioneers of the space race, but practically every decision we made was in response to something Russia either did or said they were gonna do. So we were not proactive in that race, we were reactive. And the biggest reactive thing we did was, we're going to the damn moon, which we did. And then we found out that Russia was not going to the moon, we were done. And you talk about exploring the moon, ask yourself, how many scientists did we send to the moon? One. And all, what moon mission was that on? The last mission. So evidence that it really was never about exploring the moon. And all the science experiments that the astronauts did, nearly all of whom were ex-military pilots, the experiments they did were because we got NASA to have our little uh, uh, experiments piggyback this $100 billion enterprise. It, that's not why we went to the moon. So that's it. You want to go to Mars? If some rogue country puts military bases on Mars, we're there. If not, I don't really see it happening anytime soon. Wow, it's good to see that nothing has changed. Hey, it's caption time here on Wheel of Science. Neil, we took this picture of you and put it up for people to comment on, and here are our favorites. I wonder what caption they will give the photo. And the other, Kirk or Picard? Hmm. That, I wonder what caption they'll give the photo. It's very meta. That's, that's a, I, I like that, but you gotta stay in the, in the geek world, and I gotta say Kirk or Picard. But I might add Kirk, Picard, or Janeway. Ooh, how enlightened of you, Neil. Time now for our Wheel of Science poll, and the question is, where should we explore next? Moon or Mars? Answer the poll right here, and Neil, Moon or Mars? Do it all. Better than a Nike commercial. Don't just do it. Do it all. It will take billions of years for the Earth and the Moon to tidally lock. But it takes just a few minutes to build your personal or professional website on Wix using ADI. Just answer a few questions, choose a template and a layout, decide if you need business features like an online store, and go live with a click. We don't have a store at Wheel of Science, but if we did, I'd be selling designs to stop the moon from tidally locking with the Earth. Yeah, and I also would be selling bridges. Yeah, but that's just me. I suggest anyone else cheat and just let the ADI make a website for you. How cool is that? Hey, if you want more design customization, you can use the regular Wix editor and get exactly the site that you want. Use all fonts, all the motion backgrounds, and all the visual web goodness you can handle. Go to wix.com slash go slash startalk and begin your site now. Hey, that's our show. As usual, we have to say thank you to the one, the only, Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Thanks, Neil. Um, I remain your humble servant. Well, in that case, paint my house. <laughs> Not that kind of